Hi, hi my, Irene. Hi, hi, Marco. My name is Irene Aldrich. Uh, I'm a president of Able Markets, and we have a pleasure today to be joined by Marco Villanena, who has been working in big data and financial big data for a very long time. We're not going to mention how long. And we're going to discuss uh, big data in finance. We have a conference coming up on December 5th. It's called Big Data Finance Miami this time. Yes, um, Miami. Let's get out of this dreadful cold fall. That's uh, right. Fall. And also visit Art Basel Miami, which happens the next the day. Arts, you know. Yes. So we're very grateful to our sponsors, Sweet LLC and also Tenometrics. May I ask you what Tenometrics does? Because Sweet, I know. They are a big fixed income player. They're JP Morgan guys that decided to go on their own and you know, very nice sure. people. What about Finamet? Finametrics is a specialty treasury consultancy. They do software and um, uh, they also do various pricing and valuation. So you know, they're very good people to get to know as well. And um, they're going to be at our event too. Yeah, thank you, Finamet. <laughs> and thank you, Sweet LLC, yes, yeah. Yeah. for sponsoring the event. But the, Jean and, uh, and, and Gerard. Yes. You know, are, are, oh, they always yeah. sponsor Big Data Finance. Yes, yeah, four years in a row now. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're very grateful. So, with bottom line, so what is Big Data Finance? You know, there are a lot of people who think that Big Data is. Yeah. is uh, okay, so it's, there's it's, Big Data. There's Big Data for the social media, Big Data for consumer uh, tracking consumer behavior, presumably, Big Data for helping you navigate, you know. The streets of San Francisco, and you know, for for going to on, on, on the 101, you know, if you find out if there's traffic or not. Uh, but you know, there's also basically big data is anytime you have transactions or certain things going on, and you wish to extract some information from it. Um, in finance, you know, we have finance produces a lot of data, and when I mean finance, I mean uh, market finance. We're not course you know we could also talk about uh, how financial applications for retail such as acorns or others operate and that's fascinating you know like um, get a mortgage online you know we love that but I think that uh, what when, when we say big data finance we're talking about you know trading and risk management of, uh, of portfolios for, for asset managers and for brokers and so forth. What about family offices? Family offices, absolutely. I think that family offices have a fiduciary, you know, obligation to the, the families that they serve. And one of them is to make sure that the families continue, you know, that their investments are well protected. So, you know, I think that's... So family, they need the latest tools. What's that? Yeah, they need the latest tools like everybody else. And they, they're pretty good at that because the family office is basically a hedge fund that serves one or a few families. And, uh, you know, people like that are always on the forefront of what's new. And what's new right now is that, uh, you know, you can actually measure very well. You know, in the old days, maybe you would say, I have volatility in this stock or beta. This stock is a high beta stock. Be careful. It's going to move a lot when S&P moves. But now you can actually go back in history or, or, or simulate that stock going forward or a group of stocks. And really you could, you could, you know, find out a lot about what happens when the market goes through stress conditions and how to better edge. You can do it very fast. And you can do it. Yeah. You can do it very fast, which means basically for, for this, for this application, it means that you can be very broad in your analysis. Because why would you go fast? Well, you go fast because you can do, you can process a lot of data. Also, right. you might have a situation where you you want you want to transact fast, but most that is more for brokers or you know, family offices. Typically, uh, are just investing you know funds, so they want to make sure that that they're investing in the right things that they can do scenario analysis. And it's very important to be able to play back your portfolio. In the old days, you, you couldn't play back your portfolio because the data was not available. Or now you can have a playback function, and really, if you, you know, they really understand what are the risks involved. And um, so and you're going to cool. speak at Big Data Finance. What are you going to talk about? I am going to talk about some work on on uh, on risk management of very large option portfolios, option and stock portfolios. 
from the point of view of uh, really trying to understand what are the, you know, more or less trying to understand the, the collection of all equity derivatives at the same time and sort of trying to tame that beast and telling people, you know, essentially, you know, you, you're, you're basically measuring risk for people and, uh, and then they're able to tailor that risk to their, you know, to their, to whatever objective they have. Let's say, for example, if you want, if you have a portfolio, but you decide to write options on your portfolio or you decide to buy puts, you can basically understand what risk or return that involves, play the thing back and optimize, find the right mix rather than just do it in an intuitive way because intuitive ways are misleading and expensive. I always tell the story of trying to go to the airport with a driver that did not know how to speak English. That happens, you know. We all learn English, but he had Waze, the app, the traffic app, and he was able to take me exactly in the time that Waze, and he had no idea about the city, obviously, and I live in New York City for 35 years, yet my hunch about how to get to the airport fast was totally off compared to a simple app that just analyzes traffic. So when you were saying big data does that for us in finance, that we can actually have an app. Uh, and that that helps us analyze all sorts of data that's yeah. that now is generated. An app or a, or a concept, you know, for most people they would might may want to do it, you know, but you know, this, you want to store the data locally. That's a lot of data. Uh, maybe ter- historical data on all the equity markets since you know the year two thousand, for example, and then you would look at how, what are the you know how the tech say you know what what kind of features you find and. What kind of portfolios, how do they operate, how certain ETFs operate relative to others. Now, right now, you can do a lot of that on yahoo.com, which is a great site. But if you want to do it in a really data-intensive way and applying fancy analytics, because the whole thing about big data is not just the data, it's the analytics you can put on the data. You can use something called principal component analysis, which is essentially a very beautiful way of reducing the dimensionality of your data to some, you know, something more manageable. So, for example, for those out there who, who want to know what I'm thinking about, think that you have you know, maybe 2,000 stocks that you're looking at in the Russell 2000 and everything, but what size should be your portfolio? 2,000, 20, 50? What do you need in order to capture really a portfolio that is efficient with respect to the market, not to pay fees and, and to understand what you're doing. What's the right dimensionality? And what are the right stocks to exclude because they're too idiosyncratic? Or maybe you should include them because they are really growth stocks and, and you want them to, to, to work for you, right? So all that can be done you know, with these new processes that are coming online, that sure. are coming to. So some people believe that big data is a fad. Do you think so? No, I don't think so. I think that big data means that we can put to bear analytics on large data sets in finance. Now, those analytics are going to be obviously analytics. There can be, for example, we, we talk a lot about machine learning, right? So you can have supervised learning or unsupervised learning, a little bit like your children. You know, if you leave your children unsupervised... Never you know, do, never do. You know, okay. <laughs> It's a good point, parents out there. <laughs> but you could maybe do some unsupervised da- uh, learning on data. You know, let the computers figure out relationships that models currently don't see. The other thing is you can have pretty clever models done by people that are clever and try to use your, the statistical analysis to fit them to this massive amount of data. That's what people call supervised learning. So supervised learning is done by, for, by adults. Unsupervised learning is done by robots. Right. So right now, you know, it's just like you wouldn't let your car drive itself. Right. You don't want to do everything unsupervised, but it's what people are shooting for. That's where the that's where the investment is. The supervised. So you talk about a fad. I think that the transition between, you know, making sure that you believe these models requires do they make money or not? Do can you make money with unsupervised choosing of stocks? And that will require quite some time to do. Another, let me tell you, another, <laughs> another thing might be that we come to realize that all these robots will tell us what we already, some people already know, which is maybe you are better off invested in a, in a, 
in a capitalization weighted low cost index fund. And so be it. But the robots can always say, well, maybe this is a time to, you know, not just do index funds. And, and no one knows when to do these switches. So you bring up a very interesting topic that I, we're going to discuss at Big Data Finance Miami as well, ETFs. Yeah. So ETFs are, there's enormous number of ETFs. They yeah. create a ton of data because yeah. it's all tick data, et cetera. So what about ETFs and how do they fit in the whole big data, big data universe? Okay, uh, ETFs basically operate at an intermediate level between say the S&P 500, which is the entire market, which there is also an ETF for that, and the single stock, you know, like the, the, the Apple or the Snap. So the ETF allows you to invest in packages. And there has been a lot of ETF activity since, actually since 1990s, when the QQQ was created and, uh, you know, and the XLK, you know, in the, in the, in the, and, and what I see, is, and then again, another wave in 2006 when people try to commoditize, sorry, to equitize commodities and leverage ETFs and volatility ETFs. The question that you have to see, and Big Data will help you on that, is how this investment, how the public or how the markets, how do they invest in these ETFs? Are they trying to recreate a better index, the S&P 500, the smart beta concept? Yes. Are they succeeding in it? Probably yes, but at what cost, right? So the question becomes, there are a lot of these ETFs, 2,000 ETFs. Maybe of the 2,000 ETFs, I would only look at 200 max. The other 1,800 are either badly constructed, too expensive, don't have liquidity. So those who look at those ETFs will probably look at them from a more uh, uh, short term or you know, do something a little more, you know, try to understand you know, or, or would you say, or is this ETF growing in assets or is it just shrinking in assets? When you look at an ETF, not only you look at its action, you say, is this ETF growing? Then you want to be in it because, you know, obviously it's going to do well. And if it's shrinking in assets, then you should stay away. doesn't mean you can't invest in a cheap, in, a, in an illiquid ETF, but you have to be, you know, then you have to know that that's an ET, illiquid ETF and what you're investing is also... You know, and modeling all that stuff is, is really, look, for example, looking at the entire cross-sections of stocks in ETF is a very interesting topic. And it's a big data problem. Now, for exa- yes, of course. For example, let me tell you, suppose you pick your ETF portfolio. Then you kind of strip the ETFs and look at what you invested in terms of stocks. Then you reconstruct the exact stock portfolio that you do. You put it in an optimizer. And then I'd say, well, maybe you should, you're, you're too invested in that. These three ETFs are investing in Apple. Well, you choose one, you know, don't right. do all. So there's a lot of analysis. And you can see it in the big data. Of course, you can decompose, you can, you can recompose. You can say, gee, my portfolio is going to track this ETF, but not quite. I'm going to have, in China tech, for example, it's a very good sector right now. What you have is you have, uh, you know, the Guggenheim, CQQQ, which is uh, Tencent, uh, Baidu, uh, Alibaba, and so forth, and that's doing really well, but it's kind of a little volatile. Then you have another thing, uh, which is a mutual fund also by Guggenheim, International Growth, and it has, uh, you know, so how do you, and, and that is fantastic, so how do you build these portfolios? How do you, you can have very seasoned uh, portfolio managers that spend all their life, and that are going to cost you a lot of money or they're going to retire. And how can the public get that expertise? That's what big data is going to bring to us. And hopefully we'll, we'll discuss that in Miami with uh, the, the family officers and the independent uh, investment advisors, or the registered portfolio independent managers. advisor, portfolio well, managers, traders, we have traders, coming in. traders yeah. and also, you know, we can all go and maybe see some art, you know, see what's the latest... Sure. Uh, what happens with the latest? Uh, what Steve Cohen is buying? What Stephen Cohen is buying, or is he buying anything at all? Right. I hear that his shark is still. He fixed it. Now it's oh, kind great. of back. <laughs> <into> it. <laughs> all right. So big data finance uh, is coming up again on December fifth. Uh, please visit the website to register. It's bigdatafinanceconference.com. One word. And again, we're grateful to our sponsors, and we hope to see you in Miami on December fifth. Absolutely, 5th. Irene. Thank Let's you go. so much, Marco. Yeah, you Thank too. you. Yeah. Thanks.